The Centurion's flagship weaver fell out of hyperspace at the edge of Earth's solar system. Its crystalline hull shimmered, scattering sunlight into dazzling patterns. The ambassador hurried to the observation deck, his iridescent scales shifting from deep blue to a hopeful green. This was supposed to be a routine first contact with a fledgling civilization. However, peculiar sensor readings had raised concerns. The ambassador joined his science officer and technical staff at their station, his tentacles quivering in agitation as they analyzed the data. Discrepancies abounded. Earth's technological landscape defied known models. Primitive fossil fuels coexisted with antimatter containment fields, and rudimentary power grids operated alongside quantum entanglement communications. It was as though Earth had deliberately blended advanced and primitive technologies. Perhaps humanity's progress was simply uneven, the ambassador mused, though suspicion tinged the scales. In over three centuries of diplomacy, he had never encountered anything like this. As the weaver approached Earth, further anomalies emerged. Despite their supposed lack of advanced sensor technology, humans detected their arrival almost immediately. The selected landing site in a place called Nevada was perfectly calibrated. Strangely, the reception committee consisted of just three individuals, two women and one man, calmly waiting under the desert sun. No media circus, no military presence, no panic crowds. I don't like this, a technician muttered as they prepared to disembark. Their behavior doesn't match any first contact protocols. The ambassador, committed to his mission, descended the ramp, rehearsing his meticulously prepared speech. Yet, before he could begin, one of the humans stepped forward. Welcome, Ambassador Raylan of the Centurion Unity, she said in flawless Centurion intonation. Her pronunciation was impeccable. I am Dr. Emily Chun, diplomatic liaison of Earth. I trust your journey through the Orion branch was pleasant. The winds here can be quite strong this time of year. Raylan's secondary heart skipped a beat. You speak our language? He asked, striving for calm. Dr. Chin smiled warmly. We've found it helpful to be prepared. Shall we? She gestured towards a simple, concrete building. We've prepared a facility suited to Centurion's needs. However, I should warn you, our technology might seem eclectic. Inside, the contradictions deepened. Though the building appeared unremarkable, Raylan's personal scanner detected energy readings far beyond Earth's supposed capabilities. The air inside was perfectly calibrated for Centurion physiology, down to the most trace elements. Even the seating adapted seamlessly to his anatomy. If you'd like refreshments, Dr. Chen offered, we've synthesized your traditional welcome drink. Alternatively, you might enjoy our coffee or tea. Raylan's tentacles tightened. How could you know how to synthesize our drinks? Trial and error, interjected Dr. James Martinez, a technical advisor, with a genial smile. Raylan sipped the dark liquid, noting how the ceramic mug maintained the beverage's temperature precisely, without any visible technology. Every detail amplified his suspicion. You have questions, Dr. Chen said, her tone patient. Let's begin with the ones you haven't asked yet. Why would a civilization capable of such advanced feats feign reliance on fossil fuels? Raylan demanded. Dr. Chen's smile turned somber. Deception implies malice. We prefer to call it perspective. Sometimes, older methods hold value. Not all problems require advanced solutions. Before Raylan could respond, alarms blared. General Sarah Williams, the third human, glanced at a device resembling an old wristwatch. Yet its holographic interface surpassed anything in the Centurion fleet. Ambassador, she said grimly, it seems the universe has decided to demonstrate instead of explain. Raiders dropped out of hyperspace. KXAN vessels, notorious for their predatory tactics, now targeting what they believe to be a defenseless Earth. Dr. Chen's diplomatic demeanor hardened. Would you like to see what humanity is truly capable of? The unassuming walls of the facility shifted, revealing a command center more advanced than the Weaver's Bridge. 
Raylan stood in stunned silence as Earth's defenses activated. The Raider fleet was neutralized without a single explosion. Their ships froze mid-space, trapped in localized fields of space-time manipulation. Much cleaner than weapons, Dr. Martinez quipped. Less paperwork, Raylan stared as the immobilized Raiders were towed towards the moon. His scales turned pure white, a centurion sign of utter shock. You can manipulate space-time, yet your cities burn fossil fuels? General Williams, her fingers flying over an antiquated mechanical keyboard that somehow controlled the advanced systems, answered, Sometimes, simplicity is strategic. Complex problems don't always need complex solutions. As the raiders were secured, Dr. Chin turned to Raylan. For millennia, we've hidden our true capabilities, guiding younger civilizations from the shadows. But something is coming, something that requires us to take a more direct role. Across the command center screens, data from an archaeological dig filled the room. A discovery on the galaxy's edge promised to upend everything the Centurion Unity thought it knew. The galaxy is about to change, Ambassador, Dr. Chin said, and Earth will be at its center. They were human in origin. Her hands trembled as she activated her quantum communicator's central authority, which she reported I found. I found evidence that humans were among the stars when my people were still learning to make fire. The command center in Nevada displayed her transmission in real time. Dr. Chin smiled softly, right on schedule, Ambassador. Would you like to know why we've maintained our technological masquerade for so long? She gestured, and the facility's walls became transparent, revealing vast underground complexes stretching for miles in every direction. Ancient ships, temple observatories, and technologies that defied description stood alongside simple steam engines and internal combustion motors. Humanity reached the stars. Millions of years ago, Dr. Martinez explained we built empires, fought wars that made stars, went dark, wielded power that no species should possess, and then we realized something that nearly destroyed us. Technology without wisdom is a path to extinction. General Williams pulled up historical records that made Tekler tentacles curl in shock. We nearly wiped ourselves out dozens of times before we understood true advancement isn't about having the most powerful tools. It's about knowing when not to use them across the galaxy. More discoveries were pouring in human artifacts, millions of years old, found on thousands of worlds. Each piece telling the same story, an ancient civilization that had reached godlike power and chosen to step back. We established Earth as a preserve, Dr. Chin continued, a place to remember our roots to maintain perspective on those fossil fuel plants. You mentioned they remind us of the cost of progress. Without foresight, the simple machines teach us humility. Every piece of primitive technology serves a purpose in our development program. Ron asked his diplomatic training, struggling to process the implications for ourselves and others. Dr. Martin smiled. We've been guiding younger species, helping them avoid our mistakes. Those raiders we just stopped. They'll wake up tomorrow with no memory of the incident, but with a mysterious new understanding of why conquest isn't the answer. Suddenly, every screen in the facility lit up with urgent warnings. Dr. Chen's expression turned grave. And now you understand why we're revealing ourselves? Something is awakening out there. Something we fought eons ago. Something that requires us to stop hiding and start preparing the galaxy's younger races. For what's coming, the images on the screen showed a darkness spreading between the stars, a void that consumed light itself. General Williams' ancient-looking wristwatch projected a countdown that made the human's expressions turn grim ambassador. Dr. Chin said softly, Your people call themselves the Centurion Alliance Masters of Gnome Space, but there are regions of space that aren't known threats that we've been holding back since, before your ancestors discovered fire. It's time for humanity to step out of the shadows, not as conquerors, but as teachers. And if we refuse your guidance, Tekler asked her scientific skepticism, wearing with the evidence before the rep, Dr. Martinez chuckled. My dear, you've been accepting our guidance for centuries. Every mysterious scientific breakthrough, every seemingly impossible leap in understanding. 
We've been there nudging and suggesting protecting. The only difference, now that we're telling you about it as if to emphasize this point, a section of the facility's floor became transparent revealing a vast chamber filled with ships that made the Centurion flight ship look like a primitive canoe. Yet among these marvels stood museums of simple machines preserved as carefully as any ancient treasure. The question isn't whether you'll accept our guidance. General Williams set her eyes fixed on the spreading darkness in the long-range scans. The question is whether the galaxy's younger races are ready to learn what humanity discovered millions of years ago. The most advanced civilization isn't the one with the most powerful weapons. It's the one wise enough to know when not to use them. The facility's alarms began to sing in harmony, a sound that somehow conveyed both warning and hope. Humanity's masquerade was ending, and the true history of the galaxy was about to be rewritten deep within Earth's Mariana Trench in a facility that bent light around itself. Commander Maya Patil gazed at the wall of time. Thousands of holographic displays showed pivotal moments across the galaxy civilizations. Taking their first steps into space species on the brink of self-destruction and countless moments where humanity's hidden hand had gently nudged the cosmos toward wisdom rather than catastrophe status report. She commanded her simple cotton, uniform belling, her authority over technology that could reshape reality. The Centurion delegation is processing the revelation well. Her eye companion, Delta, responded, its avatar manifesting as a simple blue light. Another example of humanity's deliberate technological restraint, Dr. Chun is preparing to show them the archives. Maya nodded watching as another screen showed Dr. Vex's archaeological team. Uncovering more human artifacts, the young alien scientist's discoveries were no accident. Humanity had been carefully orchestrating this revelation for centuries, they're ready for phase three. Maya decided to initialize the AWAC in protocol across the galaxy. Seemingly dormant human technology began to stir not weapons or warships, but something far more powerful knowledge carefully preserved and protected until the younger races were ready to understand it. Back in Nevada, Ambassador Ryan and Techler followed Dr. Chun through a doorway that shouldn't have been possible a simple wooden door that somehow connected Nevada to the heart of Mount Everest. This is the first archive Dr. Chin explained as they entered a vast chamber carved into the mountain core. We maintain similar facilities across Earth and throughout the galaxy, each preserving different aspects of our history and knowledge. The chamber was a study in contradictions. Quantum computers operated alongside Abacus's digital displays, shared space with paper books, and at the center, a simple wooden table held what appeared to be an ordinary cup of water. Your first test, Dr. Martin, said gesturing to the cup. Tell us, what do you see? Tech Lair waved her analytical tentacles over the cup. It's just water, no weight. Her instruments were reporting impossible readings. This water is perfect, molecularly perfect. Every atom is aligned with mathematical precision that shouldn't be possible. The simplest things are often the most profound, General Williams remarked. This cup demonstrates why humanity chose to step back from godlike power. We learned to create perfect water. Yes, but in doing so we almost forgot the beauty of a raindrop. The chamber's walls shifted, revealing humanity's true history. They watched as human civilization rose and fell multiple times. Each cycle reaching further into the cosmos, wielding greater power until finally achieving something beyond mere technological supremacy wisdom. We were like children with fusion bombs. Dr. Martinez explained we could split atoms before we truly understood why we shouldn't. We could reshape planets before we learned to cherish them as they were. Each time we fell, we rose again until we finally understood the responsibility that comes with power. Suddenly alarms echoed through the facility but these were different from the earlier warnings. These sounds carried an ancient weight that made even the humans pause. The Void Heralds, General Williams announced grimly their awakening faster than we predicted. The chamber displays shifted to show the spreading darkness between the stars, but now Relen and Tyler could see what they had before patterns in the Void purpose in the darkness. This wasn't just some natural phenomenon. 
It was a return of something that humanity had fought years ago before we revealed more. Dr. Chen said her voice carried the weight of millions of years of human experience. You need to understand what we've been protecting. You from the void, Heralds, aren't just an enemy. They're a test that every spacefaring civilization must face. They embody the temptation to use power without wisdom to take, without understanding the cost of taking. We fought them. General Williams continued back when we were like them, drunk on our own power, certain of our superiority. The war reaped galaxies, and in the end, we learned that victory wasn't about having the strongest weapons. Dr. Martinez approached a cup of perfect water and added a single drop of ordinary rain. The perfect molecular alignment shattered, creating something new, something natural and imperfect and beautiful. Sometimes he said softly, the most advanced solution is knowing when to embrace imperfection. The Void Heralds cannot comprehend this. They seek perfection through power order through dominance. They're what humanity might have become if we hadn't learned to step back. The facility hummed with energy is more of humanity's hidden technology, awakened not to fight, but to prepare to teach and guide. To help the galaxy's younger races understand what had taken humanity millions of years to learn, your people aren't ready to wield our highest technologies, Dr. Chin told the Centurion delegates. But you're ready to begin understanding why we chose not to wield them ourselves. The question is, are you prepared to learn as if, in answer, the darkness between the stars pulsed and across the galaxy's younger civilizations looked up at their skies in fear and wondered if humanity's time in the shadow was ending not with a show of force, but with an offer of guidance? The true test was about to begin in Earth's orbit, carefully hidden behind holographic clouds. Sarah Chun watched the galaxy prepare for war, not with weapons. Humanity had learned better, but with understanding, the Centurion delegation had spread the word, and now representatives from a thousand species were arriving, each discovering that Earth's primitive space stations were gateways to technologies beyond their comprehension. Their adapting well, Ambassador, Rand noted his scales now a thoughtful shade of blue-green. After three weeks of revelations, he had become an eager student of humanity's philosophy, though some still demand access to your advanced weapons. Of course they do. Sarah smiled watching a holographic display, showing civilizations across the galaxy, discovering carefully planted human artifacts. We did two ones, and the hardest lesson we learned was that the most powerful weapon isn't a weapon at all. The station's observation deck shifted, its seemingly glass windows becoming a vast display of the approaching void. Heralds, the darkness between stars had purpose now, moving with terrible intelligence. They're not just an enemy. Sarah explained gesturing to patterns that only humanity's ancient understanding could perceive. They're a reflection of what happens when a civilization gains power without wisdom. We know we nearly became them deep in the Horsehead Nebula. Dr. Vex NAD made another discovery. This time she wasn't alone. Human archaeologists worked alongside her team, revealing layers of history that had been hidden. In plain sight, this is impossible, she whispered, examining a device that appeared to be both ancient and brand new. The quantum dating shows it's millions of years old, but it's still functioning perfectly because it was designed to explain Dr. James Martinez, who had quietly appeared beside her. Some technology doesn't need to be flashy or powerful. Sometimes the most advanced solution is the one that endures the device activated, projecting a history that made Vex species' proudest achievements seem like a child's first steps, but it wasn't a history, conquest, or technological superiority. It was a record of humanity's failures, their lessons, and their growth back on Earth in a classroom that defied normal space-time. General Williams addressed representatives from across the galaxy. The room appeared to be a simple lecture hall, but each attendee experienced it in their own atmospheric conditions, their own gravity, their own way of perceiving reality. The Void Heralds aren't coming to destroy you. She explains her voice, translated perfectly into a thousand languages. They're coming to offer you what they offered us millions of years ago. Power without price advancement, without wisdom, perfection without understanding. The room's walls became transparent, 
revealing the true work beneath its carefully maintained. Disguised vast cities that existed out of phase with normal space-time technologies that could reshape reality, and yet scattered throughout preserved examples of humanity's simpler tools and machines. We keep these Williams gestures to a preserved steam engine, not because we need them, but because they remind us of something crucial, every tool, no matter how simple or advanced, has a lesson to teach in orbit. Sarah LED Ambassador ran through a door that opened into the heart of Jupiter's great red spot here in a storm that had raged for centuries. Humanity maintained one of its most important facilities, not a weapons platform or a shield generator, but a library. Your people believe the storm is a natural phenomenon. She explained as they walked through halls, containing the accumulated knowledge of millions of years. In a way, we learned long ago that the best hiding places are the ones that don't look like hiding places at all. The facility's alerts suddenly changed tone, not warning but recognition. The Void Heralds had begun their approach to occupied space, and their message was the same one. They offered humanity UNS ago, surrender to perfection. Why maintain the deception for so long? Reen asked, watching as the darkness approached. Why not simply show your power and leave the galaxy openly? Sarah's smile held millions of years of human experience because true leadership isn't about showing power. It's about teaching others to use their own power wisely. We didn't hide because we were afraid we hid, because some lessons can only be learned through experience across the galaxy's humanity. Hidden guardians emerged from their cover of primitive technology, not with weapons or shields, but with something far more powerful. As the Void Heralds approached, humanity prepared to teach the galaxy's younger races the hardest lesson. They've ever learned that the strongest defense against the darkness isn't technology or weapons, but the wisdom to know why you shouldn't need them. The true test, Sarah said, watching the galaxy's younger races prepare for what was coming isn't whether we can defeat the Void Heralds. It's whether we can teach you to understand why they're already defeated, not by our power, but by our choice, to use it differently. The darkness between the stars grew closer, but now it faced something it had never encountered before, a humanity that had spent millions of years preparing not for war, but for understanding. The Void Heralds arrived not with violence, but with a whisper that echoed across civilized space. Their message was simple. Seductively accept our gift of perfection in Earth's primary command center, varied in the quantum realm beneath Antarctica. Maya Patel stood before representatives of 10,000 worlds. The chamber appeared to be a simple auditorium, but it existed simultaneously in every major capital of every space. Faring race watched carefully. She said as the void, Harold's first demonstration began around a distant star. Reality itself seemed to crystallize, transforming an entire solar system into a mathematically perfect structure. This is what we refused to do ago. Ambassador ran scales, shifted to deep gold and wonder with fear. It's beautiful, he admitted yes. Sarah Chin agreed, standing beside him. Just as a perfectly aligned crystal is beautiful and just as dead, the display shifted, showing the transformed system in spectrums beyond normal space, where there had been a vibrant ecosystem of planets. Now there was only sterile perfection, where there had been evolution and change. Now there was only stasis. We almost accepted their gift. Dr. Martin has explained his simple clothing now revealed as an interface with technologies. Beyond comprehension, we nearly became them perfect, unchanging, empty across the galaxy. Humanity's hidden guardians activated their final protocol. Not a weapon, not a shield, but a lesson written in the language of reality itself. Every piece of primitive technology, they maintain every simple machine, they press a bird, began to tell its story in the Centurion capital steam engines revealed quantum equations hidden in their steam patterns on distant worlds. Internal combustion engines demonstrated principles of cosmic expansion in their firing cycles. Simple wooden doors became gateways to understanding that transcended normal space-time. The Void Herald's perfect crystal ships approach Earth. Their message unchanged, except perfection and chaos become eternal Maya. Stepping forward, 
her voice caring to every world, every species, every being capable of understanding. We offer something different. She said, not perfection, but growth, not stasis, but change, not power, but wisdom. The simple cup of water from the first archive appeared before every representative. But now they could see what humanity had seen millions of years ago, that in its very imperfection, lay the seeds of something greater than perfection. Your civilizations look at humanity's primitive technology and see weakness. General Williams announced the Void Heralds. Look at it and see inefficiency, but look deeper. The chamber's quantum displays revealed the truth that humanity had hidden for so long. Every primitive technology that was maintained contained patterns that echoed through reality itself. The smoke from steam engines traced paths that match galactic evolution. The rhythm of internal combustion mapped the heartbeat of space-time. We didn't maintain these technologies because we needed them. Sarah explained as understanding dawned in the eyes of 10,000 species. We maintain them because they teach something that the Void Heralds can never understand. That perfection is not the absence of flaws, but the acceptance of them. The Void. Heralds' crystal ships, Ed as their sensors, detected something impossible. Humanity wasn't fighting back with weapons or shields. Instead, they were doing something far more dangerous. They were teaching across the galaxy. Younger races began to understand. They saw how humanity's seemingly primitive technologies contain profound truths. They recognized that the choice to use simple tools alongside advanced ones wasn't weakness, but wisdom. The Void Heralds offer perfection with, without understanding, Maya continued. We offer understanding without the promise of perfection. The choice has always been yours in that moment, as crystal ships hung motionless in space. The galaxy's younger races made their choice not with weapons or technology, but with understanding. They chose imperfection. They chose growth. They chose life. The Void Herald's perfect crystal ships began to dissolve not from any weapon, but from contact with something they couldn't comprehend. The beauty of imperfection. The strength of weakness. The power of choosing not to use power. This was always the test. Sarah told Ambassador to run as they watched the darkness between the stars recede. Not whether you could defeat them, but whether you could understand why they had already lost across the galaxy. Humanity's hidden technologies powered down, not in surrender but in victory. They had accomplished what no weapon could. They had taught the galaxy's younger races why the most advanced civilization isn't the one with the most power, but the one wise enough to know why power isn't the answer. What now ran as the scales, shifting to a color that had no name, the color of understanding. Maya smiled, picking up a simple pencil from her desk. Now we teach you everything else. We've learned not because we're superior, but because every teacher was once a student and every student becomes a teacher. The darkness between the stars had lifted, and in its place was something greater than perfection. The endless possibility of growth, change, and wisdom. Humanity stepped fully into the light, not as conquerors or saviors, but as teachers ready to share the hardest lesson. They'd ever learned that true advancement isn't about reaching the stars, but about understanding why we reach for them at all. The End